What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Today, we're going to do another re- year-end review show, and we're going to talk about the best shows and worst shows of 2022. Brian, we don't have to, I guess, go too deep in terms of the worst shows, but there's some <laughs> shows we need to sort of dig a little deeper on. Um, the best show you guys already know what we think are, is the best show for t- 2022. Um, but Brian, yeah, I think it's a forum just to kind of go through the range a bit. I think, yeah, to your point, this is a year where in the category of best shows, everyone's playing for second place and it is a distant second yeah. place. When we talk about second place, <laughs> it's like second place to Usain Bolt in the 100 <laughs> meters, second place to Secretariat in the 73 Belmont. That's what we mean by second place. Okay. But there's other shows that I think are, as we move further away from them, are worth kind of just looking back and saying, oh yeah, that was this year. Let's talk about it a little bit. So yeah. I actually want to lead off with one that I think is a little bit in the polarizing category, but I wanted to get your take, which is Kenobi. So this was probably the most anticipated of any Marvel Star Wars comic book genre show that we had this year. Yeah. I remember as we were going through it, there was probably more things we liked than didn't like at the time. That's kind of how I remember our shows. Like we generally were liking it, we're excited by some of what we saw. I am finding the further I get from it, and maybe it's a little bit of Andor is coloring this because Andor turned out to be so good, but I'm kind of feeling a little empty, like that that show left too much on the table and I don't know, like I just, it just isn't really satisfying when I look back on it. You feeling that at all? I do, and I put it in the same bucket as Solo. Interesting, okay. In that it is forgettable. Um, There were certainly some cool moments in the show, Brian. I enjoyed your McGregor's performance. Uh, I was, um, interested in darth vader uh wasn't too fine with, with some of the choices in, in terms of how they used him but it had its moments brian but it it didn't leave a lasting impression or an excitement about seeing another season of this i'm more towards the camp of let's move on um we tried if you were trying to do more of this, it didn't work, but nice try, let's move on. I agree. I mean, it's funny, Andor and, and Kenobi, I think I'm always gonna compare it because it came out in the same year, but Kenobi was a show where I look back on it and I almost feel like, I think they should have asked Ewan to do more because I think he had more to give. I, I think when I think about the show, I don't find myself thinking about his performance, but I don't think it was his fault. It's not that he was bad. He's always good as Obi-Wan. It's just that I don't think the script was dynamic enough for where that character was in life. I still have a lot of the same questions I had before the show about how he was feeling kind of post Revenge of the Sith. And and I don't know, like, and or I praised in some ways because Diego Luna did less, did more with less screen time in that show and it was perfect for that show Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i actually feel like ewan mcgregor needed more in terms of dialogue and introspection and kind of getting inside his mind and his struggle and i don't think the show really challenged him to do that and i i find myself feeling like it was like a missed opportunity where you had a great actor there it is yeah there it is the missed opportunity for me brian those moments when you were with when, when you were with Kenobi and he's like like a child calling out to uh Qui-Gon um and trying to speak to it speak to him and that was perhaps one of his lowest moments there when he's just you know constantly calling out for him and he doesn't reach him and then he sort of finds this connection with this woman whom I thought in his you know, moment of need, he, he forgot the Jedi way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And th- had this connection. Boom, she escapes. We don't see her again. And boom, he has we have he has a kid. That's how you that's how you move forward. 
but they didn't do that. They killed that shit. And I thought she was great. Yeah. So again, Brian, there's missed opportunities there in terms of telling a future story, leaving something in the bank. Here, they didn't leave anything for us to look forward to. For what? For what? Just to see more adventures with Kenobi and Darth Vader. I don't know. I, I don't know. You, you know, I don't think you go move on from this. And I think the show was guilty of the thing that Gilroy was talking about with regard to screenwriting, which is that it, you didn't, I didn't have the true sense of fear of Vader and of the Inquisitors that I probably should have had. They kind of came off at times as a little bumbling. Um, you know, I think Moses Ingram took a lot of undue heat for yeah. a character that I think was not written all that well. But the Inquisitors as a whole, like, we didn't see them be ruthless, infallible, brutal to where you're like, oh, man, we can't mess with these. Like, you're mm. kind of like, they're kind of like stormtroopers. They miss a lot, you know? And even Vader, who is supposedly one step ahead, like, he sort of was with regard to Reva, but then he kind of wasn't with regard to Obi-Wan and Leia. And for someone who is, you know, like, his his status in Star Wars canon is as a legend and he's the great pilot and he's the great fighter. Like his one loss record in these big fights is not that great. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I don't know that this show like added to his legend that much. But what I think Brian, they did well was listen, the guy left me to burn, cut off my legs. I can understand that obsession yes i agree with he that he had i think they did a good job in 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 displaying his obsession that yeah he didn't know he couldn't sense that they were in the, you know what i'm saying because he was so the dude was able to stop a uh a, 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 <laughs> a ship from a ship or whatever yeah. that's crazy <laughs> so they did a good job with that but it was again the fight scenes obi-wan um, the action sequences weren't that impressive. Yeah, like the uh, final duel had moments. Like yeah. I don't like I remember in the moment being very caught up in it. I was very yeah, like yeah, invested. Yeah, yeah. I was like, this is yeah, yeah, yeah. and I did like I did like seeing Hayden Christensen's scarred face in the mask. I thought that like that had been done in the animated series. I thought they did it very well in this show. So there are definitely some like high points, but yeah, I just find like the first I think you're right. The further we get from it, the more this show is gonna kind of just come and go. Yeah, despite having Obi-Wan, Vader, Leia, I have all these named characters in it. And I agree with you. Like, I will be far more excited for season two of Andor than I will when they, if they green light another season of this. And the fake suspense with the kids is like, come on. We know these kids survived. There's no danger the you can put them in. You know what I'm saying? That uh, it, it just, it just, it didn't grab that, 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 that intention of you guys of you guys wanting wanting us to feel drama and suspense. I think, and then maybe that's why, where your solo analogy is really apropos, because I think what we're finding out is that you're using the biggest name characters you have in the Skywalker saga. And I think we're just consistently finding you're too restricted by what you already know. Yeah. You know, like in the finale, the fact that they put some drama around baby Luke and you're like, there's no drama around baby Luke. He good. <laughs> We know he's good. You know, he'll be at the Tashi station getting his power converters in a couple of years. No worries. You know, so yeah. that's what I mean by like, Andor wasn't constrained by that. And it it helped. It helped the drama of every episode where you had no idea who's going to live or die other than Cassian and Mon Mothma, basically. Yeah. I think Star Wars needs to take that cue that, you know, same thing with Solo. Like seeing the early days of Han Solo I think we found out that we don't really need to do that. It's better that he, it's better that we talk about the Kessel run than we actually see it. Yeah. You know? Cause yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so yeah, that's our take with uh, the Kenobi show. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a show that it had people that, that liked it more than Andor, which is amazing to me. Um. <laughs> but that, see that to me that's just a force jedi thing i think at some point it's just like if you if you have to have a lightsaber and you have to have force powers and you can't see past that I, fine but i, yeah. I just you, you can't the writing and 
the storytelling to me are just not in the same they're not in the same league yeah yeah um the worst show of 2022 brian <laughs> it's quite obvious what it is brian <laughs> we thank you for the success you brought onto us with your horribleness but it was a show that we knew from jump brian we had it at the bottom of our least excited for worst shows and it was she hook yeah and it turned out to be every bit as true so it was no surprise to me brian your thoughts yeah i you know like on the one hand, we 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 wanted Marvel to take swings. I think when we saw this one on the list, you know, you had it at the very bottom. I think I had it second from the bottom. I think we watched with each passing week, and we kind of were like, "This this show is just firming that firming that <laughs> ranking up." Um, you know, it. I was surprised by how much discussion it generated. If that makes you know, like we you know, like our show viewership for that was very high. Like I think it definitely was a controversial show like there were people that really seemed to like certain things about it like how unmarvel it was i was surprised mm -hmm. at that to be quite honest mm -hmm. there were people who really hated it. like it, the people who didn't <laughs> like it hated it like and there's always that surprised me too because i didn't find it so so offensive it just was what we thought it was good it was just it didn't need to exist and it doubled down on the worst parts of the Ruffalo Hulk. You know, I, I like Maslani. Like, you know, I shout to Tatiana Maslani. Like, that was a thankless task. And I thought she did a great job with what she was given. The CGI became like its own storyline, which you never want. But it just, to me, we're starting to see, you know, probably the lasting legacy of this show to me is that we are starting to see more nuggets about, you know, uh world war hulk and you know new things they might be doing with with and i am just completely out on all things hulk post yeah. this show until there's a full reset i'm sorry that's just how i feel yeah yeah every time i see that scene of him introducing his his son it just brings a sense of disgust <laughs> it's like oh, really yo <laughs> It's like it's just like so it's Ruffalo. Like, oh. So at one end of the spectrum, it's Empire Strikes Back. No, <laughs> I am your father. And at the other end, it's uh, introducing his son at the oh, family barbecue. <laughs> it, it, it's 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 just it's just it's just sad to watch. But yeah, that's the worst show of 2022. There's no this. There's no arguing the fact. No, I think it's just we heard there were production issues with this show. We heard there were behind the scenes problems. I think you feel it. We talked about it. The show feels inconsistent. It feels uneven. I think only the finale really maybe feels like what they were trying to do. And even then, I'm not a huge fan. Um, Daredevil doesn't feel great to me in this show. Like, I just, I actually hope that Bob Iger sits down and watches this closely. And I'd be curious to know what he thinks about it, because obviously this was conceived of when he was still the CEO. So I mean, he was aware of it. But having seen the execution of it, I wonder how he feels about it and whether it will become a cautionary tale for how they use Marvel on Disney Plus. Because like I said, I do think that not only was the show not successful, but I feel like it kind of set back some some of the other things in the universe. And I, I don't think you want that, especially in as interconnected as the MCU is. And so even though I feel like we're going to see Jennifer Walters again and we're going to see, you know, the Hulk and maybe his son go forward. I, I just, I don't know. It, it just feels like this was a huge step back for all of them. If we know that Marvel is moving toward less content under the Iger regime part two, mm -hmm. I find it hard to believe that shows like this will be top of list given what else we know is in the, in the pipeline. Yeah. I do and, wanna, can I throw one other? Sure bad like bad show that like in retrospect kind of bothers me more Boba Jupiter. Fett? oh i was gonna oh. say jupiter's mm. legacy oh yeah 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 that one just feels like 
that that's the kind of stuff that I feel like hurts the genre. It's like, it looked good. It should have been good. It was based on something that was creditable and it was just so poorly executed. And it, and, it, and as best we can tell, they ran out of money, literally <laughs> Netflix did on this show to where you're just like, I almost feel like, why, why was this even released? Like, I almost just feel like I wish they just scrapped it. I feel like I'd be better not to have seen it than seen it bad and, and have it canceled after one season. Had I known, Brian, that this would be on the list, because I forgot completely about it. Um, this could be on par with the worst show of 2022, because I was excited for this show, because I liked the way it looked. Um, and it was from a world that m- most people who who read comics thought, you know, was done really well. And, and, and I was excited to see what this looked like. And they totally dropped the ball, man. Uh, but yeah, She-Hulk is still the worst. Yeah, I agree. But this one was just... Yeah, yeah, for something that came out of like off the radar, I thought was that an honorable was, mention. Honorable <laughs> mention. Yeah, I think that I think that's right. So yeah, it could all be more controversial than it is bad. It's just more yeah. worth talking about. Yeah. Do you have any other you have any honorable mentions before we take the one last celebration on, on Andor? I have only really one. But because I, you um, know, in fairness, I, I kind of by and large, they they weren't bad enough to warrant warrant discussion, but like Moon Knight was interesting, but not great you know like i feel like that's where we were with a lot of these shows like miss marvel i was entertaining my kid really liked it so i think mission accomplished for the show but it miss marvel yeah she really liked miss marvel especially the finale for kids mm-hmm. it was great but i, I just yeah. you know it just they did what they needed to do with miss marvel yeah but it just wasn't yeah exactly but it wasn't like at the yeah. level you know and you're right about moon knight and there's something that i think about like what happened with moon knight because i thought some of the things that they were doing brian were fantastic the only bad part, and I think you mentioned this in, in our in our conversations about it, was that Moon Knight himself wasn't that exciting. Oscar Isaac, however, was amazing. His story was amazing. His performance was amazing. The origin of where these personalities were created from was, for me, heart-wrenching to see. And... Yet Moon Knight, the character, wasn't impressive. Um, one thing, Brian, that I thought they missed out on the opportunity to end the season is to show us how he got it out of those situations. And then I thought they were going to do that. I thought they were going to show us that. That would be like the end of the season sort of thing that we see every time uh, there's a new season or whatever. And they never did that. So it's like, I wanted to see these spectacular, um, I guess, getaways or or survival methods of whatever. Because every time there was a point where you thought it was over, he's out of it. I wanted to see how he got out of it. And I thought they missed out on opportunities to show us that. And that's the one thing, this is a weird one because the way the season, the season finale was sort of in some ways a classic Marvel misstep finale. Yeah, yeah. But then that last scene in some ways was like one of the most interesting moments of the season where to your point, you get teased the evil killer alter ego and you're like, wow, I wanna see that. (laughs) So if you did a season two and he's gonna do that and I get to see it, I probably would come back and watch, but Again, it's like in the moment, it felt like we were really invested, especially when they were in the the mental hospital kind of in his mind. There was some really interesting storytelling that they were swinging for there that I really enjoyed. But it was an uneven show. And like I said, it left me want, it did leave me wanting more. So I guess I have to give it that. But I, I can't at the same time call it like a smashing success when you had Oscar Isaac, who was dialed in, Oh yeah, and you had Ethan Hawke. I hope I, I, I hope he gets uh, a, a nomination for uh, what is it an Emmy or it would be Golden an Emmy. Globe. I mean, at this point, they're going through the Globes and you're seeing some TV awards, but the Emmy's the one you're the Emmy's the yeah. one you're you're talking about. Yeah. All these, so the only other so the, I, I will also the only other show I will also say that really quick aside, I thought Umbrella Academy took a step back this year. Brian, I didn't. Even, I start. I watched our first episode and I didn't go back to it. 
I just, I just, you just, know, I, I think just I can sum it. up the mistake really in one thing, which is they, and, and it might be because of the pandemic. I just want to float this out there. So this season really was localized to a very small kind of building, basically. And if you notice that all the scenes have only like one or two people in them, which I think is a nod to social distancing and productions. But I think one of the things that made the past seasons great was sort of like the time jumping where like you're in the future and you see their version of like the TVA and then they're in the 60s with the Kennedy assassination and civil rights movement. And I almost feel like this season, like they either cut the budget or like I said, because of pandemic, couldn't shoot on location. And it it made the interplay between the sparrows and the umbrellas just not what I hoped it was going to be. And I think it's interesting because the fourth season is the final one. And they cut the episode load to six. And I think that's probably tells you that this season was not that well received, not as well watched. And Netflix is cutting the budget for the final year. And they're kind of just finishing it out and getting it out of there. So yeah. I think I also have to put that in a net disappointment. It just wasn't, but it was watchable. It just wasn't what the other two seasons were. Yeah. So which, which leads to my only honorable mention is the voice. I, that's the only one to me that like, I don't, this show is so perverse that right from the premiere and you, you know, what scene I'm talking about, okay. they just hit you in the face with something that's so grotesque and yet you can't look away. And then it's executed so well that you're just like, this is incredible, even though I know it's disgusting. And when we talk, we talk about performances we do not talk about anthony Starr as homelander enough because this guy is going to go down as one of the better villains we've ever yes. had to the point where Absolutely. i almost feel like he can't play anything else in the genre as good as he would be i think as like a potential lex luther or some other character yeah, I, yeah right I, anytime he's on screen i i'm just like gripping my seat to, because you just don't, don't know, know how twisted and what this dude is gonna do that is the the beauty of this show, Brian, that you don't know what's going to happen at any moment. Every time I'm watching the screen, I think something's going to happen. It's like it has you on edge. It's crazy. They, uh, they, will, they will kill or maim or hurt anyone at any time. That's the thing. Yeah. Nobody is off limits in this yeah. show. And that's what's great about it. Uh, but they keep you on the edge. Yeah. The Boys is, is, is one of the better shows out there that when it's on... There's no one else that really can compete uh, in terms of the people talking about shows when it's on. So yeah, that's a good show. So you want to take the this is the last celebration of what was the one transcendent show we got? Not every year you get a transcendent show. Not every year you get one that goes on the library and you're like, this one's going to be there 100 years from now. But season one of Andor I just, just took us to places I didn't think was possible for Star Wars. Yeah, um, and that was, I guess, the. it was amazing to experience, to be that invested in a Star Wars show, even more so than Mandalorian. Mandalorian, I was in, but this one, nothing, there was nothing about any of these episodes that felt like filler. Mm -hmm. Um each interaction, the performances were just, you could, I, I couldn't stop watching it. There was sometimes I had to just go back and watch the whole thing over again because of how, how great it was. Because I still go back it, and watch, I'm yeah. still going back and watching clips and scenes and speeches and dialogue and rooms like peace. I just like, I got to see this again. And in yeah. fact, it's funny, my, my feed on YouTube today, uh, the Star Wars feed clipped the Luthan speech and just threw it at the top of my feed randomly, like that one, one and a half minute <laughs> rant that he goes on. I'm like, they're still doing it. I, I you know, yeah, yeah, and I yeah. clicked on it. I clicked on it and watched it again. Why not? You know? Yeah. So, so I mean, yeah, Tony and Gilroy, it, Dan Gilroy. And like, amazingly, we didn't talk about it, but like Bo Williman, who created and wrote House of Cards, which people forget was an amazing show before the whole Kevin Spacey yes. disaster yes. kind of <laughs> sidetracked everything. You know, they had him as like the third writer on this show. That's wow. how ridiculous this show was and you know and they they used three directors so I, we'd never talked about them but like toby haynes benjamin karen Susanna white like no drop off like there's none like that, I, it still boggles my mind that like you got <laughs> it's been a long time since it's like 
We have a team where everybody, role saying? players to all stars to Hall of Famers, just came to play. Yeah, I I hope we'll talk about it in performances. But like the Screen Actors Guild is the one award show that gives ensemble awards. Mm-hmm. I really hope there's a nomination and hopefully maybe even a win for the cast of this show because of its size and the depth of the performances. Cause in some ways you can't really single out. It's hard to single out one. Yeah. And the Oscars doesn't do uh, an ensemble award. I, I hope they get some acknowledgement as a collective because it's, it's amazing. And I, we were talking about what else could you do this template with? And I, I kept thinking about it afterwards. And I, I think I've settled. I don't know what you think about this. I think I've settled on when they come around to doing Disney plus shows in the X verse with the mutants. I wouldn't mind like maybe our Wolverine anthology show formatted like this three episode arcs through history and take a really adult mature content stance toward it. I think Wolverine is not, is not, is not something that you play with. If they were to do that, then pff, let's. We can only hope. Yeah, I might go to Tony Giro and just how much, how much. <laughs> Word of how much? Like, just name the name the number. I will double it for you to write twelve <laughs> episodes of a Wolverine anthology show structured like this show through history. Wow. <laughs> the possibilities. So that um, I mean, yeah. Again, I just. I hope people through the holidays that they have time came came come back around and find this show. You will not regret it. And you you don't want to be behind in 2024 when season two comes back. Cause I have a feeling season two is gonna be a big deal when it hits. I think by that time this show oh, yeah. picked up some steam. Especially after winning these awards that they're gonna probably win. I hope. I hope. I hope the the uh, Shit's Creek uh, <laughs> effect <laughs> happens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but one last thing before. Um, is there anything else after this before we wrap up? No, that was the idea. Yeah, we saved Andor for last. That was the last show, but we've talked about it a lot. We love it. Yeah. So. There are some individuals out there who are Star Wars fanatics. Um, and fanatics, I mean, like they're, they're fans, they're, they're, they're huge fans of the Star Wars world. Um, that didn't really like this show, and 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 they and these guys have a, a following of their own when it comes to the content that they put up about uh, Star Wars, and some of the things that they said, Brian, regarding Andor, like it was like it's like all they want is the the, the Luke stuff. The, the 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 Skywalkers, the Jedi's, and it's upsetting that they they can disregard a piece of the Star Wars history, which was the rebellion. And to and for and for these guys to a- ask the question, how does a rebellion start? And they show and you and they show you this. Come on, man. It's like, why do you have to choose? I don't understand why what. But what is this like you have to like one and not the other like the beauty of a universe like this is that you sh- you can find room for great storytelling of different varieties mm-hmm. i mean i love the i love the high points of you know empire strikes back and new hope like yeah those are i'm in my top five favorite movies of all time but i love mandalorian and i i, I love this unapologetically mm-hmm. like yeah i don't know why it's an us versus them with the like star wars on star wars crime like i don't i don't i don't know why we need that like even if this necessarily like, isn't your favorite style of star wars i don't know how you can not respect the craft that's what you that's what i'm it. talking about it's like yo I gotta tell people like, yo, that, oh, I'm not into Star Wars. I mean, you don't have to be in, into Star Wars to like this. Yeah, it's probably better. Yeah. It's actually probably better if you're not. This actually yeah. does not assume that you know anything really about Star Wars. Exactly. Um, so, man, I really hope that uh, people tune in and watch the Andor series and get ready for the second s- season. We're going to have ample time for you guys to catch up and watch it, but definitely watch it. And who knows? 
it could be one of those shows where Brian that you can binge two seasons of it. You know what I'm saying? Because people binge one season and that's it, they're done. Um, gone are the days that where you you binge like four or five seasons, you just on it <laughs> every every week. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's our show on the best and worst shows of 2022. Let us know in the comment section below what are your favorites. Uh, of 2022, your worst and your honorable mentions. Let us know in the comment section below, and we'll see you next time on the Nigeria Report.